It's a new year, and that means it's time for new things like decluttering. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to declutter your closet in a whole new way and tell you how you can clean out your closet in two weeks. Hey there, lovely. Welcome to the Radiantly Dressed Podcast. Do you want to feel beautiful and confident and look put together in your clothes? Do you find yourself scrolling Pinterest, looking for capsule wardrobes and outfit ideas? Do you walk into your closet hoping for an easy wardrobe solution only to feel frustrated and frumpy when nothing looks or feels like you want it to? Hey there, I'm Stacy. I'm a busy homeschooling mom juggling life, business, and struggling with autoimmune disease. Just like you, I felt overwhelmed and frustrated with my closet and wished I had an easy to put together wardrobe that reflected who I am on the inside, the woman that God is constantly refining. But I just could not figure out how to have easy mornings and authentic style until I found the power of color analysis and capsule wardrobes. In this podcast, you'll find how to wear and use your best colors, a proven framework to create an easy closet full of clothes you love, and how to do it all in a way that honors who God created you to be so that frumpy fashion doesn't get in the way of your faith and mission. So put in your favorite earrings, swipe on some lipstick, and let's get dressed. Hey girl, it's that time of the year again where we're running our annual decluttering challenge. Now, this challenge is amazing because it walks you through the process of cleaning out your entire wardrobe, but in a way that's not overwhelming. So if you would like to join us, please go to closetcleanoutchallenge.com and sign up to join this challenge that starts on January 22nd and runs for two whole weeks. Be sure to sign up at closetcleanoutchallenge.com. And since we're on the subject, let's talk about clothes clutter and decluttering and cleaning out our closet because that's what this episode is really all about. So once upon a time, I had clothes in many different areas in my home. And at this point, it's only two areas. I have my main clothes and then I have the clothes that I need to declutter, which I am really excited to start working on as well um, during this challenge because um, there are just some things I've held on to um, because I thought, well, I'm not entirely sure I want to get rid of it. Maybe I'm going to wear it again. Um, I just need to kind of wait and see. I'm not ready to really make that decision yet. And I am at the place where I'm definitely ready to make some decisions and to clear some space out. Um, the interesting thing is that statistically speaking, most women own approximately 200 items of clothing. Um, and I don't know if that number shocks you or makes you feel overwhelmed or crazy, but you know, you think about the fact that they're including, you know, um, wearable clothing and pajamas and all those different things. So, you know, it's, that's a lot to manage though. It's a lot to sort through. It's a lot to think about when you're getting dressed. It's just a lot of clothes to have to choose from. And guys, this steals our time, right? It steals our time. It steals our energy. It forces us to make too many decisions at the first part of the day, um, which depletes our energy for making important decisions later in the day. It's called decision fatigue. Um, And so really, your closet being simplified and streamlined can have a huge impact on how your day starts. But decluttering clothes can be hard. I don't know why I find this area, I used to find this area really difficult, Um. I personally tend to attach a lot of emotions to things, um, which makes it hard for me to clutter at times. Um, and, and truthfully, honestly, I am still on a very big life decluttering journey, home decluttering journey. Um, I My family is filled with <laughs> level one hoarders. Um, and so everybody wants to keep everything. And it's really difficult to get rid of things, um, especially if they're watching. It's nearly impossible. And so... I followed the advice, right, of many of the decluttering experts, and, and and it says to basically focus on your own stuff first. So that's what I've done, really. And the place that I did that was in my closet. And it really has empowered me in so many ways to change my mindset and thinking about what I want to keep and why I want to keep it and how much stuff I want to manage. And it's helped me to really let go of a lot of those attachments that we have when it comes to our things and our stuff and our clothes especially, Because we get attached to our clothes for lots of different reasons, right? Um, We can have emotional and sentimental attachments. Um, We may remember an event we wore something to, and it may bring up nostalgia. We may feel guilt. This is a big one for me. Feel the guilt of the money that we spent when we see things sitting in our closet and think, well, I spent good money on that item. I really need to wear it, but we somehow never do wear it. And 
every time we look at it, it, the guilt just gets deeper and deeper and we feel worse about ourselves because we spent the money. Uh, recently I bought a linen blazer from J crew, which was not cheap. Um, and still had the tags on it. And I let it sit in my closet for about two years because I felt that financial guilt. And I tried to sell it on Poshmark and never really went. And finally, a couple of weeks ago, I actually got so tired of looking at that thing in my closet that I threw it in the Goodwill bag. I just sent it to Goodwill. Um, well over a hundred dollar item and I'm just, I'm done looking at it. And the truth is that I feel that way about a lot of things that I've been holding on to and I'm ready to throw them all in the Goodwill bag and just let them go. One of the other reasons that we often hold on to clothes is because they represent a fantasy version of ourselves, whether that's a past self, um, a past life that we had, um, something that we did that brought us joy, maybe before we had kids or of our career. And we hold on to those clothes because they represent a person that we used to be. And it's hard to let go of that sometimes just to move forward. Um, but you are the person that you are right now. The other side of that is sometimes we hold on to clothes that represent a fantasy self that we want to be, a future self that we are hoping we could be, which was probably the blazer for me. Uh, and so we don't get rid of those things because we think, well, what if I need it? Um, what if I'm going to become this person? And those I would also encourage you to let go of. Focus on being yourself right now. Focus on the person that you are today because the person in the past is gone. God has made you a new person now. And the person in the future is not guaranteed. You don't know the person that you're going to become. But beyond these mental, emotional thought attachments that we often have to clothing, decluttering can be an overwhelming process. (laughs) I have read lots of different decluttering books. I have studied lots of different decluttering methods. And some of them are truly overwhelming. They ask you to, you know, take everything out of your closet and put it on the bed. Well, If you have small children, that stuff's never going back in the closet. (laughs) Okay, you're just going to have a pile on the bed that now you have more stuff you have to deal with. Um, Some of them ask you, you know, to pull out your clothes and ask yourself if it sparks joy. But what if it sparks 5,000 other emotions, right? You have to sift through. I don't know what joy feels like in a piece of clothing. Some clothing doesn't spark joy at all. You know, my bras don't really spark joy. I have to wear them, but they're not really sparking joy. And so instead of taking on your wardrobe one big bite at a time, I would love to share with you the lighten up approach that we're going to use here at Radiantly Dressed. So this is actually a two week closet clean out challenge that we do every year around the first of the year, sometimes in December, but it's something that we do every year and we go through our closet systematically in different sections. Uh, We look at all the different areas of our wardrobe, 13 days of items, and then a catch-up day, and we tackle them one piece at a time. So for example, one day you'll tackle jewelry, and one day you'll tackle all your bottoms. But doing it this way lets you focus on just one piece and not get overwhelmed, not get a mess in the process that you throw on your bed, but be able to really focus on all the pieces of your wardrobe separately so that you can clean them out a little bit at a time. And the truth is, there may be areas that you don't need to clean out. They may already be pretty minimal because some of us tend to go maximalist in one area and minimalist in another. And so there are certain areas of our wardrobe we may not actually need to work on. Um, But this way, we make sure we hit all the areas just in case to see that we're covering all the areas and really getting some big traction over a short, manageable period of time. And this year we have added something new. This year there is a workbook to go along with this so that we can tackle some of those thoughts that we have and think about those things as we move along. We can track what we're getting rid of. And so that just makes it a little bit more fun is to be able to see your progress on a piece of paper in real time and to give you advice as we're going along. We are kicking that off on January 22nd and you can join by going to closetcleanoutchallenge.com to sign up and you will be added to our private Facebook event where this will be going on every single day with prompts to keep you going and keep you on track. It's a fun, fun challenge. You know, the truth is I got into this whole process in 2015. My first intro really to thinking about my clothes as a grown up was in the form of capsule wardrobes, which I have, you know, talked about before. But I asked myself a while back, what was it about capsule wardrobes that appealed to me so much? What was the reason that I wanted to take this on? And it's because I just wanted simplicity. Um, 
I didn't maybe know that I wanted to have less, but I just wanted to make easier decisions. I wanted to feel confident, obviously, because I was a somewhat new mom and didn't really know how to dress myself anymore. Um, And I wanted it to be easy. I wanted to have less. I wanted my clothes to really work together in a way that was powerful and impactful without having to make a bunch of decisions about what to wear. And it's taken me eight years, (laughs) really, to understand the mindset of having less, to really embrace it. It took me quite a few journeys to get here because, as I said, I come from a family with some hoarding tendencies. (laughs) I think I picked up that Great Depression mindset from my grandparents of never getting rid of things because you might need them later and passed it on to my kids apparently as well. My husband has it as well. His grandparents were the same way. And it, it can be really hard just to let go of things. But I have found so much freedom in just taking this one area in my life that I am in full control over. Uh, I can't control the toys all the time because they belong to other people. I can't control my husband's clothes. Wow, he has a lot. But I can control my own wardrobe. This is one area where I have complete control. And beginning to declutter it and make it manageable and clean out the things I'm not wearing and only focus on the clothes that I really do want to wear that make me happy, that suit me authentically in my own personal style has been such a game changer. And I want that for you. And so I hope you join us in our decluttering challenge. It's going to be so much fun. And I can't wait for you to join us and see us on the inside. Hey there, gorgeous. Before you go, if this episode inspired you and helped you to feel more confident, I'd love for you to leave me a written review on Apple Podcasts. Second, hop on over and join the free Facebook group at christianstylecommunity.com where you'll find Jesus-loving women just like yourself learning about style and building a dream wardrobe. Get dressed, be radiant.